What's up fish heads? Tony Baber here back with another episode of Co-Angler Talk. Today we're going to talk about how I would typically set up my tackle bag to fish a tournament as a co-angler. I want to give you some suggestions on things to make sure that you have with you as well as some things that will help you be more efficient while you're out there on the water. So let's get to it. Welcome back guys. Let me start off by saying that if you haven't done it already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, ring that notification bell so that you can stay in touch with the latest happenings on my channel, Tony Baber Fishing. Now in the first episode of Coming with Talk, we talked about kind of getting started in tournament fishing and what your expectations should be. In the second episode, we went over some of the overview of like a tournament weekend, as well as the etiquette that you should kind of be following as a co-angler. And in the third episode, we covered more of the strategies that would help you kind of be successful as a co-angler. And kind of piggybacking on that, I wanted to continue with that and get into a more detailed look of how I set up my tournament bag. There's a lot of different ways and different ideas on how to do this. This is something that has evolved for me over the past four or five years fishing as a co-angler. And I think I've got it down to a pretty good science. It helped me be a lot more efficient and also be more successful and be prepared for different situations while I was out there on the water. So I want to get into basically the bag. So to start off with, there's a couple different ideas and thoughts on this. Some people say bring a couple bags, bring a ton of tackle and things like that. I wanted to go with something that would be a little bit more convenient, smaller, also easier to kind of move around and fish around, so to speak. So this bag here in particular, I got at Cabela's. You can purchase it on sale typically for about $39.99. I think the regular price on it's about $49.99. The size of it I felt was really good because it's got a lot of options as far as pockets and storage and things that you can do with it. But it's also the right size for these newer boats that have the bigger compartments and stuff in the back. If you get with a boater that'll allow you or cleans off one of those compartments so that you can store stuff in it, this bag will fit down in there nicely without being too tight and also easily accessible while it is in that compartment. So kind of getting started in on this, we'll start up here in the front. One of the things that I initially liked a lot about this bag and some of the other bags that I've used is having these front tool pouches on it. Um, I've had a bag that had them on the side as well, but having these accessible on the outside is a huge advantage um, because you don't have to go digging through your bag trying to find them if you're trying to cut you know cut your line tie on a new lure or whatever it is or get your pliers to take a hook out of the mouth of a fish it's all right here and it's easily accessible with velcro uh, like i said this bag i've had for about three years now and the velcro is still holding up pretty good on it i've never had any issues with tools falling out uh, it also gives you a really nice way to kind of secure your tools so that when you're making those long runs you don't have to worry about them bouncing around or losing them or jumping out of the boat or whatever it is. Um, in the front compartment here, the way I would typically do mine would, this would kind of be more of like my tool storage outside of the things that I would reg regularly need. Um, I put like my highlighter pins in here. Also in this little pouch here, I would have like split ring pliers just in case you ever need to change some hooks out. Um, something that you, you know might be useful for you. Also an extra pair of scissors just in case you actually did lose your uh, scissors. Now, and then I'd have my wacky tool and some of the other things that I'd have in here is, you know, like the KVD line and lure conditioner because it's always a good thing to have and pop a couple sprays on your reels or whatever to kind of keep that line loose and performing good. Your dip and glow stuff, whether you use like the dip jars, which, you know, can be a little tricky because you don't want to get dip all over, you know, like the, the chartreuse all over the carpet or anything, which is kind of a hazard of using the bottles. I like using the spray style because you can hold it over the side of the boat, you don't have to worry about getting anything on the boat, but you can still have that abil ability to add some chartreuse to your baits if you want. Now, obviously with this being open, you can put some other stuff in here if you feel like you need it. I always try to keep it simple. Um, I do have a hook hone in this uh, little zippered pouch here on the inside, a little block here to kind of sharpen up your hooks if you ever needed to. Just little things that I tried to make sure I had with me in case I ever needed them without overdoing it and bringing too much stuff and complicating things. Uh, I also would use this throughout the day kind of as a trash can, if you will, for soft plastics or any baits that I didn't 
that I wasn't using that I cut off or whatever. It wasn't like a hard bait if it was a jig or something like that or some kind of like a soft plastic hook flipping setup or something. I would just throw that stuff in here. That way it's out of the way. It's not flying around the boat. You're not losing it. You're not losing it with his tackle. Uh, nobody's stepping on it, that kind of stuff. So that kind of covers the front pouch. Um, how I would do my side pouches is there's some big pockets here on the sides. And I would typically use this for drinks or snacks on either side. So I do like my drinks on one side, snacks on the other. Um, usually you can put your drinks in the cooler on the boat. I don't think I've ever really had a boater not offer to do that. I always just kept mine there because typically I wasn't too concerned about it getting warm because I drink it too fast anyway. And then with this bag, it's got these pockets on the side here, like these extra pockets on the outside. I would use these for some soft plastic storage. So I would use it for like one side would be my trailers, uh, like jig trailers, chunks, uh, spinnerbait trailers, swim swim trailers for chatterbaits, whatever it is. I put that kind of stuff here on this side. That way it could be easily accessible because you know you're more likely to have to change a trailer and something like that than just about anything else, so to speak. And then on this side, I would put like my swim baits because a lot of these, I mean, I like the Strike King Rage Tails. They come in these clam packs, which are a little bit bigger and bulkier. So I put them on these outside pouches so that it wouldn't be taking up valuable storage room inside but then it'd also be easily accessible and also keep from damaging the swim baits or the packaging. There's also some storage in the back. I never really utilize this too much. I might put like an extra neck gaiter in there or a pair of gloves or something like that. Just as like an extra storage or even um, hot hands or something like hand warmers. If you're using anything like that, if it's like a colder tournament, maybe that's a good spot to store something like that. Now in the top, because I want to keep stuff accessible and also not worry about damaging it, I would put my call tags. Now there's a bunch of different systems out there. This is one that I had originally started with. I've since moved to the TH Marine Gen 2 calling system, which is actually a great system. Highly recommend it. It's non-penetrating, easy to use. Um, that's kind of where I'm at with that, but that's how I use the top of the bag because it made it quick and easy to get it. So if you caught a fish, you didn't have to waste time digging through your bag, trying to find your call tick tickets and stuff like that. Now to get into the inside, now this is where there's a lot of different flexibility and things that you can do. Now this is kind of going back to what I was saying, this is something that I've kind of evolved over the years and developed to work best for me, to help me be efficient on the water. So obviously it's all case by case basis, depending on where you're fishing, the tournament you're fishing, conditions, things like that. But some standard things that I would do is this, this bag will hold up to seven 3700 size boxes. So I have one that was a double deep, so to speak, basically two boxes, and I would use this for all my soft plastic storage. So the nice part about this is it kept it all nice and organized in one spot, but easy to grab in and out without having to worry about finding one bag or one particular package or something like that. And then it was big enough that I could have plenty of storage space to be able to store however many plastics I needed, which is another reason why I use like the side pockets for the trailers and stuff, because it freed up more space in here for storage of creature baits, worms, whatever it is. So like my structure bugs and all that stuff I typically have in here, finesse worms, all that stuff. You can put um, beaver baits in here. You can put all kinds of baits and there's a ton of room in here, you know, plenty of storage. Uh, it's one of the great things that I kind of came up with as far as four soft plastics to kind of help keep them organized and also to keep you from overpacking and bringing too much stuff. So it kind of helps you eliminate or think a little, think twice, I guess you could say, about how much stuff you're actually bringing with you. Now, I would typically try to keep this kind of in the middle just to keep make it easy to get in and out of the box. And then I have, of course, a terminal tackle box, which I always like using these waterproof boxes by Plano. I know there's some other ones by other brands that are out there. These are great because it kind of helps keep the water out of your stuff so you're not getting water in your hooks, getting them all rusty and ruining them. And what I would typically do with the terminal stuff is, because I have three of these boxes set up. I have one for all my weights, like my slip weights and uh, punch baits and stuff like that. I have one for my jig heads and then I have one for just my hooks. So obviously I'm not going to bring all three of those with me out fishing as a co-angler. So what I would do is I'd take one of these boxes and I would add a little bit of what I thought I would need for basically each category, so to speak, into the one box. So I would have my jig heads, I'd have hooks, and I'd have uh, bullet weights and things like that, tungsten weights also in here. 
so that way I could do anything I need to do. I'd have plenty of options and stuff without taking up too much room in my bag. And then of course with the waterproof, makes it nice because you don't have to worry about your stuff that's wet or rusty. Just fishing as a co-angler, you don't have nice compartments to put stuff in to kind of help keep it protected. So that was one of the ways I kind of helped battle that in case you were ever out in inclement weather. Now, another thing that I always did that helped me be efficient as well as not overpacking and things like that is I always had one box that I would use kind of as a multi-box. So I would put everything else that I wasn't able to fit in here as far as like complete 3,700 boxes, I would kind of do like a mixed bag of baits in. So if I had, um, if I wanted to have some spinner baits, some buzz baits, swim jigs, you know, square bills, lipless crank baits, jerk baits, things like that, I could put them all in this one box and have a good enough assortment and have enough room for a good assortment that I could be diverse enough without actually overpacking and making things too complicated. So I like this particular one, Cabela's, sell e Cabela's sells these in four packs and I like them because they have these big open compartments up front which allow you to put things like spinner baits in here and not get them all twisted up or worry about damaging any of the wires or any of that stuff. You do buzz baits, you can do some of your deeper, like your bigger deep dive crankbaits, like your 6XDs or 8XDs even, fit well in these front compartments. And of course everything's, you know, customizable so you can move the tabs around. And then with these, it was the same thing. Like I'd put tabs in if I wanted to have more baits or separate stuff out, but it had enough room and flexibility that I could put jerk baits in here, you know, square bills, whatever it was I wanted to put in here, I could put it all in here and it'd give me a lot of different diverse choices and ways that I could kind of go about doing that. Now the way, so if you look at it, this is one spot, this is two, so there's three, four. So that leaves you three more spots in here for 3,700 size boxes. Now I wouldn't always fill it all the way up because I actually liked it if I could get away with five or six boxes just because it made it a little bit loose, gave it a little bit more room, made it easier to get stuff in and out of it but obviously given the conditions you might need more tackle and want to make sure that you have enough stuff but what i would do with the other spots is if there was something that i knew i was going to be fishing a lot of or that i really wanted to have a good selection of with me i would take that whole box because all mine are broken down i have you know all these 3700 boxes are all broken down by bait style and things like that you know like your top water walk the dog style baits your chatter baits your jigs all that kind of stuff square bills all have their own kind of box. So what I would do is based on the tournament would bring that whole box with me. So like this is my jig box here. If it was something where I knew I was gonna be flipping jigs a lot, then I'd bring the whole box with me just so I could have everything that I wanted to have. And then the same goes with this, you know, like chatterbaits. So if I knew I was gonna be throwing a chatterbait and I wanted to make sure I had plenty and some other options as far as colors and weights, I'd bring my whole chatterbait box with me. So that's kind of how I would do it because it gave me enough flexibility to be able to bring what I had confidence in, like chatter baits and jigs and things like that, but it also would allow me to bring enough of that stuff to have enough as a backup. But then also with the kind of multi-box setup and the soft plastic setup, I could bring everything I need to and stay efficient without bringing too much, causing myself to second guess or constantly think like, oh, I should be throwing this, I should throw that, you know, all those kind of things that kind of go through your head as you're fishing a tournament, especially on a tough day. This would kind of help cut back on some of that mental clutter, if you will. Uh, so this is kind of my process. This is kind of how I would always set things up. I suggest that you give it a try, give it a thought. Because um, like I said, you can bring enough with you, being able to carry seven boxes. That's a lot of tackle. Um, so it gives you a lot of diversity and you can do a lot with it. But also with all the extra pouches and pockets and things like this, you can bring whatever you need to bring. You know, whatever you think is going to help you be efficient, uh, be a better angler, things like that. You have all those options with a bag like this. So I suggest look into something like this just because it's not too big so you're not bringing a whole bunch of stuff. And then also because it, it keeps it lightweight. You know, you're not bringing 70 pounds of tackle and all this other stuff. And it's also small enough that it keeps you efficient. I hope all this kind of helps you and that you're able to use a system similar to this and maybe be more successful while you're out there on the water. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something today that will help you be more efficient while you're out there on the water fishing as a co-angler.
Good luck this year and good fishing.